Okay, good. Now, often the side here, because I've, I've tried drawing them in on the same diagram and it just gets very confusing. Often the side here, I'm going to draw two force resolution diagrams, one which corresponds to AP and one which corresponds to BP. Okay? And then, much like we did in your projectile motion, I'm going to work out what's the horizontal, what's the vertical component. Okay, so here's what it looks like. like this is under part B now. Okay, so I'm resolving the force. Let's do AP first, okay, because I know more about AP. So AP looks like this. There's A and there's P. Okay? I've got a box around here, just like I had with projectile motion. And you can see there's going to be a horizontal part. I like to draw it here because it's acting on the particle. And then there's a vertical part here. Okay? Now, I know that this angle up in the corner is 30 degrees. So because this is um, AP over here, this is the tension in the string, right? The tension in the string, it's pulling that way so that the thing doesn't fall down, okay? So if I call this like T1, okay, for tension one, I'm gonna have a horizontal component and a vertical component, so I'm gonna call them Y, and x, but I'm going to have another one, so I'm going to call x1 and y1. Okay, so how am I going to work out what each of these parts is, knowing that that's 30 degrees? What am I going to do? Sine. Okay, so I'm going to use sine and cos. If you remember, for vertical things, if you have a look here, in this top triangle, right, sine 30 is going to be opposite on hypotenuse, right? Y1 on T1. So just rearranging, this is going to be T1 times sine sin 30, which is a half, right? So this is actually just a half T1. Does that make sense? Okay, that's fine. Uh, what about what's happening on the bottom? Use 60 degrees. Okay, so I can use 60, or I can just say, hey, you can just use Cosine, there's going to be 30 degrees here because it's alternate angles. An angle of depression and an angle of elevation are always going to be the same. So if I said cos 30, right? Cos 30, of course, is. So there you go. Now keep in mind, I don't know what T1 is. I don't know how much tension is pulling along there. I'm going to find that out later. Okay? But all I'm doing is trying to separate out the different parts, the vertical and the horizontal. Can you do the same thing? For the other string, can you do it for BP? Well, why don't you try, and then we'll see what kind of a, um, uh, a picture that we get together. Okay. <laughs> I totally booked this room. <laughs> um, we will use part one. You, you can if you want. Okay. It'll, it'll, you'll, you'll do it sooner or later. So you can if you like. Okay, let's do the vertical component first because it's easier because you already know something about the vertical component, right? In exactly the same way as I did before, this vertical component is going to be T1 sine whatever, yeah? So here, I'm going to get T2 sine alpha, which of course is 3 over 4. So far, so good? In the same way, I can do the horizontal one, but you need to think a little more because you don't know what the other side is. What is this side going to be if I've got, no, wrong one. What is this side going to be? Root 7. It's going to be root 7, right? Because you can see if this is... 3 over 4, it's going to be the square root of 16 minus 9, which is root 7. Okay, so if that's root 7 over there, right, this is going to give you root 7 on 4 times whatever force is going off in that angled direction. Okay. okay, so you can see I've got forces going this way, I've got forces going um, upwards, two of them, this one and this one, and then I've got forces going that way, right? two of them going in opposite directions. And remember the particle is still. Okay? So now I'm ready to do part C. I've got a whole lot of information here. You need to put it together back with Newton's 
first law, right? That because this thing is not moving, that means that the net force is zero. All of your horizontal bits are balanced, and all of your vertical bits, one, two, and three, are also balanced. Does that make sense? You can say it in a couple of different ways. I prefer to go back to the definition of net force zero. So I'm going to say, let's do, um, let's do, should we do horizontal vertical first? Which did I do before? I did horizontal first because there's less of it. Wait, have we already done the Yep. I have resolved the forces. So now I have everything in terms of up, down, left, right. I don't have anything off at angles anymore. Okay. So therefore I can deal with them just like I did with project Okay. So let's do the horizontal bit first. There are only two horizontal forces, and when I add them up, they should have a net result of <coughs> zero. Okay? So you can see here, I've got one over here, and one over here. Does that make sense? So, okay. You happy with that? Now, I could use that as my equation. But I happen to know, like look at where I'm going. You see I'm going to have to find both of these tensions, T1 and T2. So I've got two variables here in one equation. I'm going to have to produce another equation out of the vertical forces, right? So since I know I'm heading towards solving simultaneously, rather than leave this equation in this messy form, I'm going to prepare it for the next step, right? Now, for simultaneous equations, we know two main strategies for how to solve simultaneous equations. What are they? Substitution and elimination. elimination. Now just think for a second, we haven't even written the second equation yet, but which do you think, just looking at these numbers, which do you think is more likely to be useful? I think substitution is going to be more useful. Elimination, remember the way it works is, oh, I've got a pair of coefficients here, and another pair of coefficients here, and I just need to fiddle with them to make them the same. I don't want to fiddle with these guys, they look disgusting. So I might as well put in a little bit of extra work. Let's make T1 the subject. Can you make T1 the subject for me? Get it in terms of T2. Okay. 